So welcome. Uh, my name is Jim Mohammed, and the session is called Maximizing Mediation, a Mediator's Favorite Techniques. And uh, so you've just had your demonstration of a first technique, haven't you? Uh, in fact, that little chime, uh, I presented to a thousand people, and that little chime got a thousand people to sit down and pay attention. That, that's what I call, call communication technology. Okay. Um, it seems Pavlovian to me, but... Okay. It is, well, <laughs> some of us are better trained yeah. than others. Huh? Um, let's quickly get into our second technique, which of course is the flip chart. And let's appreciate the flip chart is actually on a dimension or a spectrum. For example, mediating like this is a lot more imposing than bringing it back. And in fact, one of my concepts is only so forcefully as necessary to get the job done. Less is more in terms of your intervention. So third technique, as folks come in, I'm always going to have a little bit of a road map for the day. Typically four, five, six little agenda items, uh, in part to keep us on track, but also to let them know I've been thinking about things, I've been preparing. In fact, this little agenda would also reflect my most recent correspondence to them where the last paragraph had said, I look forward to getting back together. I anticipate we might begin by this and this and then talk about this and that. And so as I'm in, in a rush preparing for my next session, I just look at most recent correspondence, look at the things when it was fresh in my mind that I said we would talk about, put those things on the flip chart. And I really don't need it front and center. And so I'll typically put the day's itinerary just somewhere in the corner of the room, just somewhere where I can kind of reference it. They can reference it, have a little bit of a sense uh, that we're making progress. Okay? So just a few little techniques. But let me wrap back now to uh, the introduction. Uh, I want to, first of all, clarify that I'm not sharing all techniques. Okay, these are favorite techniques. Okay, so um, I also want to say, you know, I remember going to these conferences, you know, 30 years ago and going to a session and I would learn two or three or four things that would change my life as a mediator. I mean, it's such powerful concepts. And so that's kind of my goal here to get you at least three or four or five just really compelling concepts. That's why I'll be sharing about 25 uh, with you just to increase the odds, okay? Uh, but I also want to say that if something doesn't resonate with you, just let it go flying on by. Don't get hooked in it. Don't worry about it. You're going to do things that you believe will work for you. In fact, everything you're doing is what you think is the best possible thing in the moment, because why would you do anything else, right? Okay, so I'm not here to convince you of everything. I'm just trying to offer you some opportunities to identify some concepts and techniques that might really help you with the folks in the room. Okay. Um, questions. I do, in fact, encourage questions because we're taping. I'll tend to repeat the questions. Um, I'm not looking to debate things because, again, if it doesn't work for you, that's good enough for me. Just don't take it in. Um, uh, so, but I do especially appreciate clarifying questions to help me understand this better. Um, I'll repeat your question. I'll try to give you a laser beam response, like 30 seconds or less. If I can't do that, I may negotiate with you for time after the session or the like, because we've got a lot of stuff to go through, and I want to try to get through it all. Okay. Any immediate questions or concerns? Okay, let me see what else I had. A uh, couple things. One, divorce mediation is unique. It is the only area of mediation that I know where the issues are, if you will, perfectly predictable. Okay. These are not the first people to get divorced. You know? And I know everyone is unique a little bit and different in this way, and the, but these are not the first people. We've been through a lot of this. We can anticipate the issues. Um, in fact, it's the only area where we actually have an ethical duty 
to assist the folks to comprehensively consider the issues. It's the only area of mediation where we really have an obligation to help them A to Z to get the job done. Okay. Final little piece, um, for me what we're really doing is we're putting together a couple of puzzles. And those puzzles are ultimately going to be pictures of the folks' respective futures. They're putting together now what is going to be their respective futures. And we're not going to have that puzzle's not going to reveal itself all at once. Uh, we're going to start with some of the easier stuff, maybe some of the edge pieces. Uh, it may be that we have a conversation where we put a little clump of pieces together. And I want to suggest to you that the placement of each piece, the placement of each arrangement that is acceptable for the future makes the placement of each subsequent piece easier and easier because there's more and more context within which to see what this evolving picture may look like. Okay. Uh, final little paradox for you. The elicitive problem-solving strategy, not the only one, but the one we'll start with, also tends to yield rapport because we're just going deeper and deeper into their respective realities. Okay? Um, to explain rapport a teeny bit more, it's matching, pacing, and leading. So the matching is you become one with them. You know. So this is destroying our family. So you feel like this is destroying your family. You should get a nod yes to the match every time. If you don't, you may have competency issues in the mediation, right? Uh, and then becoming one with them, we're going to walk around the block. You know, help me better understand specifically what's going on for you. You know, and what else? And is it getting worse? Is it getting better? There are no magic questions other than to convince this participant that I am becoming one, I am concerned, I want to fully rock their situation, fully understand. And at the point that they experience me to fully get them, they'll be up open to my facilitative lead. You try to lead without rapport, you'll be out there on your own. Okay? So matching and pacing is always going to preface your attempt to lead to new places. And we'll be coming back to that um, as well. You guys have access to the materials. Is that accurate also on your phone or on the app? OK, and then we're projecting here. Let's see if that. Right. So for me, all of the stuff I'm going to be talking about fits within a broader concept of maximization. And the reason I think that maximization is so important is because I think it is the value add that mediation brings to the table, that no other dispute resolution process either focuses on optimization uh, or, in fact, has that as a goal. Okay? But let's break it down. For me, maximization including, includes in assisting individuals to be at their best. Now, I mentioned this in the group session yesterday. Do they come to us at their best? Okay. More commonly, they actually come to us at their rehearsed worst. Okay, I mean, they, they've been thinking about how they're going to open up this mediation, and oftentimes there's a whole lot of victimology on both sides. But are they at their best? No, they're not. Yet, people are so capable. You know, they're often coming from running businesses and schools and their kids and doctor's appointments and all kinds of complex things. And then they sit in the mediation room in the presence of the other and suddenly their physiology collapses, you know. And so I think there's a really interesting question of, you know, do we want to work with people in that way at their worst? Or might it make sense for us to assist them to not only be better, but to be as good as they can possibly be before they start uh, engaging in decision making and the like. So um, I'm going to try to come up with a theoretic justification for that in a moment also. Another worthy goal, I think, in divorce mediation, particularly if you've got parents with continuing relations that don't end at 18 or 23, they are lifelong. Um, I think that it's a noble goal to say, can we assist these folks to 
better work together